At this point, we have the main character in idle position. What we want to do is be able to move it and have it run all around. However, before being able to do so, we need to be able to move the character using the, the mouse or using the keyboard or on a, on a mobile device such as the iPhone, we would want to touch the screen to move it, right? And in order to do so, we need to create a script to say what we want to do there, where we want to go. And let's do that. Let's create that script. First of all, click on the Iron Man prefab and under the inspector, there's the add component here. What I want you to do is just click on the add component button and here just go to script, which is all the way below. That's why you don't see it because it's a little bit below right here and just actually click on new script right here. As soon as you do this, just give it a name. I'm going to call this one Iron Man Behavior Script. Okay, because that's going to dictate the behavior of the Iron Man character. Okay, let me zoom in so that you guys can see what I wrote. And it's okay if you don't have the exact same name, that's not a problem. Once you're done, just press enter and create an ad. There we go. Now, this created the Iron Man um, mm, script. And if you go to Assets, you will see the Iron Man Behavior script. What I want you to do is select the script and move it inside of the Iron Man folder. Why? Because I like to keep all the stuff that are the same in the same folder so that it's easier to reference in the future. All right. So now if you click on the Iron Man folder, you will see the script right here. All right. Next thing you want to do is double click on it to open it to edit it with Mono Develop. Now, some of you may have Visual Studio installed and this may open Visual Studio and that's totally fine. As long as you can edit the file, that's, that's the purpose here. All right. So how are we going to move the character? You can create the whole system by yourself and, and start typing. But obviously, you, you may already know why do you want to start creating everything from scratch? Because, um, you know, you can, inter you can have many problems by creating something from scratch, especially when it comes to moving the character all around. Now, thanks to Unity, um, there's already some methods and some objects that are created for us. Why? Because many games are already using the same features. So let's just use what, uh, whatever Unity is providing us. And uh, one of the, um, the scripts that we're going to use is called the Cross-Platform Input Manager. Now, why is it called Cross-Platform Input Manager? It's because it's a script to get the inputs, such as the keyboard, the mouse, and also the touch screen. And it works on all the platforms, whether it's a console like Xbox or PlayStation, whether it's a PC or a Mac, or even um, a mobile device. So it's not beautiful. And the way to use it is to click uh, right below the using segment and add using. And we're going to call it Unity Sample Assets. So from the sample assets dot cross platform input and put a semicolon at the end. All right, so we're using the cross platform input. Now, the reason why I can use that is that I already have it inside of the project. If I go back to Unity, I see that I have a mobile input here and inside of this folder, I have the scripts right there. You guys see it? So I added the script right here. However, I did not create this script. This script comes with uh, Unity. If you uh, download the sample assets, you already have this script right here. All right. So if somehow you did not know, you can go back to Unity and, and uh, download the sample scripts. But don't worry about it. It's already included for you here. All right. Now, the next thing I need to do is modify the, uh, the script so that we do what we want to do there. We move the character, right? So let's do this. But when do we want to move the character? We want to move the character on update, but not, not, not any update. We want to move it on the fixed update. Now, you may ask me, uh, what, what are you what's the difference between update and fixed update? So let me write the fixed update first, and then I'm going to explain you. So right below the update, let's add a fixed update. All right. Now, let me explain you the difference between the fixed update and the regular update. The regular update happens every frame. So every time there's a new frame that needs to be drawn on the screen, it's calling the update. However, the fixed update happens every time there's a new physics update. So anything that has to do with the physics simulation, then this physics fixed update is getting called. And the reason why we want to do that here is that that's when the main character will 
get to hit other objects such as the the monsters or any trees or rocks that I'm going to add later. Okay, so that's why we want the fixed update. By the way, it will still work if you put it in the update. That's not a problem, but it's better to do it in the physics right here, the fixed update. All right, so what are we going to do in the fixed update? Well, we need to get um, a hold of which key or which input has been used by the player character, okay? So whenever the player presses a, a key, like the W, the S, the A, or the D, or even the, the space bar and so on, we want to be able to take this. And we're going to use the cross-platform input manager. So let's call, let's add a float, float H for the horizontal one. We're going to get the, um, the axis. So if you had a joystick or a joypad, it would be the horizontal axis. So cross-platform input manager dot get axis row and we're going to get the horizontal row okay so let's say if you had an xbox controller that's what you use with the left hand you know that that pad where you have the the, uh, the joystick here there that's what you'd be using all right so now let's get the up and down float v for the vertical axis is equal to cross platform input manager dot get axis row and this time you probably figured it out, it's going to be vertical. Now, something you have to understand is that as you can see, I put uppercase V, so make sure you have an uppercase V and uppercase H, very important, all right. Okay, so now next thing I want to do is use them to move the character. So I'm going to do move, and I'll move with the H and the V. So I'll use the H and the V. Now, um, I'm sorry, should, should be saying move, all right. Now, you, you might tell me, uh, okay, um, what's that move about? And it's in red it, because it doesn't exist, right? So it's actually a function, but we don't have that function. So let's create the function right below, void, move. So I'm creating that function and it takes two parameters, float h and float v. So vertical and horizontal. Now open and close the curly brace and let's say what it does. So how are we gonna do the movement? We're going to create a new vector, okay? So we can just create a vector three here for the movement, but it's better if we create it as a global variable so that it's only instantiated once. So right here, I'm going to add it here. I'm going to call this one vector three and let's call this one movement. All right, so that's the vector that's going to be used to, for the movement. And now inside of the move, we're going to say movement dot set and we're going to set it with the direction V, so that's the vertical direction, and then zero F for the float for, for the up and down, because we don't want to move up and down, we just want to move left and right. And then what's going to be the, um, I mean, actually it, it should be H here for horizontal, and then V for vertical. Okay, but the reason why I put I put a V before, and I want I want you to, to see the, the, the difference, is that I know that it's going to be V because the vertical in isometric in this view is different than the other one. So the vertical is horizontal and the horizontal is vertical. But don't worry about it because you can always try and see where it goes and always always um, modify it. Having said that, let's go back here. All right, so now it's, we, we're creating the uh, movement vector. And what I'm going to do is um, normalize it. By normalizing it, I mean that we want the vector to not exceed a certain amount so let's say we don't want we don't want the character to go too fast you know if it accelerates we want it to to cap its speed okay and we don't want it to go too slow we want to either make it at a regular constant speed okay so here we're going to say movement is equal to movement dot normalize normalize with a d because it's it's the more normalized movement times and here we're going to create a speed. So let's say we're going to put a speed of, um, let's say five. Now that might be too much. So put 5.0 F because it needs to be a float. Okay, but remember that this speed, we need to modify it later. All right, so five and then let's apply this. How do we do this? We need to apply this to the, uh, the character. So we need to do something, to, we need to have access to the rigid body, but at this point, we do not have a rigid body. So let's add a rigid body to be able to move it. Let's go to Unity 
and add a rigid body. So select the Iron Man prefab, click on the add component right here and here, go to physics and locate the rigid body. All right, so now we have a rigid body. Let's modify its properties. The mass one will be okay. Drag, I'm gonna put infinity. The reason why is that I want it to stop right away. As soon as we stop using the, the, the input keys, we stop the character right away. Same thing for the angular drag, put infinity as well. Okay, again, so the reason why I'm putting infinity is that it's, 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 it's uh, locking the character in place, basically, once we, we finish touching the keyboard. Now, um, we're not gonna use gravity because we don't want it to fall down. And we're gonna add a constraint. We're gonna freeze, so make sure you, uh, you, um, you open the constraints. We're going to freeze the Y direction. Why? Because we don't want the character to go up and down for now. We just want it to stay on the ground. Then we're going to freeze the rotation. We don't want any rotation on the X and on the Z, just around the spine around here, okay? All right, so now we have the rigid body and we need to use that rigid body inside of um, the inside of the um, the code. So let's save that, command S or just save and go back to the code and let's use that rigid body. But to be able to use it, we need to reference it. So let's add a reference to the rigid body here. Right below, let's add the reference to the rigid body. Let's do rigid body and let's call it player rigid body. All right. Now, in order to get access or to get a hold to the rigid body, we need in the start function to access it. Now, you can do it in the start, but since it's physics, we need to do it in the awake function. How do we do this? Let's add the awake function right before the fixed update. Void awake. So awake is just like start, but it's for the um, physics. Okay, open and close the curly brace. And here we're going to say the player rigid body is equal to, we're going to get the component. So you can do um, get component. And here, the component that we want is the rigid body of this, right? So just type rigid body and open and close the parentheses and a semicolon at the end. All right, so we have access to it. Now, as you can see, um, you put the greater sign before right here and I close it right there. That's how it won't because this is the type that we, the type of component that we're getting. This is C sharp syntax here, okay? All right. Now, what we want to do is actually move that. How do we do this? right here inside of the move let's add this to the rigid body so let's do player rigid body dot and here we're going to write move position and we're going to say inside of the parentheses where we're moving this some of you may already know where we're moving this we're moving this to the transform the position so where we are right now and the movement that we're adding so we're adding the movement to where the character is, okay? That's what we're doing. So we're taking the current position of the character and we're adding the, 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 the offset. So we are moving the character by using the movement. Now close the parentheses and put a semicolon at the end. Now what you need to do is save this, command S, and let's take a look at it in the simulator. I know it's not gonna be perfect yet, but that's how we do it to start, you know, and then you have to do trials and errors. It's never going to be perfect at first, you know, that's, that's what happens with programming, but you, you have to start somewhere and keep tweaking. So press play and you can use your keyboard, the W, S, A, D key and move the character. So I'm going to press W, S, A, and D, and nothing happens yet. So you might be wondering what's going on here, right? So let's go ahead and fix this. How do you fix this? First of all, select the Iron Man prefab and make sure that everything is okay here. Now, as you can see, we have the animator, that's great. We have the rigid body that we added, that's perfect. But if you look here, there's something missing, right? What, what's missing? It's missing the script. So somehow, sometimes when you move scripts, uh, when you move files around, you lose the reference here and that's exactly what happened here. So I have to add it again. I just click on add component and go to scripts and locate the script that we created. Now the script here is called Iron Man Behavior Script. So I'm gonna select this one and there we go. Now I have the Iron Man Behavior Script. Now I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna use the WASD keys. And there we go. As you can see, it's moving but very fast. So in the next lecture, 
we're going to tweak this. It's not moving in the right direction and it's moving way too fast. So we're going to fix this by adding variables. Let's do this in the next lecture.